So he was talking about Christianity, right? He was talking about, because you mentioned the, uh, the old folks in church, right? And if it was brought out that we're the Israelites, do you believe that we're the Israelites? And if not, what would hold you back from believing that we are the Israelites? Not having enough truth, not knowing what to study. I can't even sit up here and say that anybody that preaches that uh, you know, Israelites is, 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 is black people or whatever. Yeah, so the Israelites are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. I gotta have research before I can sit up there and believe something. Okay, okay, so when we went over the curses, right, in Deuteronomy 28, each time he would ask you, who did this happen to, right? Actually, give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 46. Because your, your spirit bear witness, because each curse that went over, the slave ships, the yoke of iron, right? Sons and daughters given to another people. You were like, that's black people. That's black people, right? So he explained the curses to you, and then you identified your people as going through those curses, right? Now, you just fulfilled prophecy. Read verse 46. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So, in same chapter, Moses instructed the children of Israel, like, they, these curses will be upon you for a sign. So when you hear these curses explained, you will then be able to identify those people who those curses fit. That's right. All right? So just like how you can identify the ATM as a PNC ATM, it's a sign on top of it, right? So that's, that's not a U.S. bank ATM, right? That's the same thing with these curses. If you can identify them as the black people, the Hispanic people, they don't fit no other people, then the curses fit the children of Israel. That's right. So the curses are to be a sign, right? And for a wonder. And for a wonder. Your question was, why do black people act this way? Why, why are we suffering? Why is there, why are we the crab in the barrel? Why is that our mindset? Why don't we have drive? Why don't we have hope? It's because of these curses. But the curses were brought upon us because of what? Uh, we the law. Yeah, we broke the law. We transgressed the law, right? So that's why we're suffering as a people. Why is it, why is it, that, why is it that it feels like some people, some black people suffer, not all black people? If supposed to be Boy, all right, give me second edge verse 9. It's supposed to be and we're going to start at verse 10. Because you can never rise above. One person can never rise above his people. That's right. All right, so like he gave the example of LeBron James, right? Think about Oprah Winfrey, right? Do they still go through racism? They do, right? So why? Why? They got all this money. But why do they go through racism? Money doesn't define a person. Exactly. Money doesn't define a person nor a people. That's right. Nor a people. So it doesn't matter if just one of us prosper. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there's 15 or 20 of us. It don't matter. But read this. Second Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 10. I told you For you know. such as in their life have received benefits. So there are many people in this life that have received the benefits of the world. They have good jobs, right? They have a nice family, right? They haven't had to experience the loss of children, right? They receive benefits, right? But let's see what God says about those people that receive the benefits of the world. Read. And have not known me. Hold on. Those people know God. Have not known me. But those people don't know God. Why don't you think they know God? First John 2. You're talking about the people that's receiving, receiving the benefits. There are many people that receive benefits, but God said they don't know me. Why don't they, like for example, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Creflo Take Your Dollar. Right? All these pastors in today, they have the benefits of the world, right? But do they know God? They teach you God, but do they know him? No, they don't. They're impossible. They, they're, they're imposters, right? For example, now let's see why our people don't know God. Even those who have the benefits of the world, and even those who are low, who have to work six, seven days a week, 12 to 15 hours a day. Verse 3, read. First John chapter 2 and verse 3. 
and hereby we do know that we know him. This is how we know for a fact and certainty that we know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one true God. This is how we know, read, if we keep his commandments. No, we have a lot of money. If we keep his commandments. So how do you know if a person knows God? But hold on, hold on. Read, read, listen to the verse. Read it from the top. And hereby we do know that we know him. So this is how we know if we a person knows God. Read. If we keep his commandments. How do you know God? That's you what? If you keep his commandments. That's what the Bible says. So the only way you know God is if you keep his commandments. Make it plain. All right. And you said when we talk to him, right? John 9, 31. I got something to say about, uh, something to ask you about Bob. I saw the end of Bob Marley. Okay, okay. All right, yeah, most definitely. So the point is many people have received benefits and don't know God, right? And we found out that the only way to know God is to keep God's commandments, okay? And now you said if we talk to God. Well, who does God talk to? Read. John chapter 9, verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, what? Now we know that God heareth not sinners. God doesn't hear sinners. So, do you know what sin is? Yeah. What's sin? You talking about the Ten Commandments, right? No, no, no. It's more than Ten Commandments. Oh, yeah, I know that, but I'm just saying. The, the Ten are the umbrella. They are the umbrella to the rest of the laws and commandments. So, what is sin according to the Bible? You're talking about the name right now, I don't know. But the other part, uh, the other Bible was talking about adultery. That's in the King James Version. Is it? Yeah. Uh, I'm not it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. So, look, 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 look. We're going to let the Bible speak. All right? So, let's find out what sin is according to the Bible. Because if you're a sinner, God doesn't hear your prayers. He doesn't talk to you. Okay? Read. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the law. So the breaking of God's commandments. So if you break in God's commandments, you don't know God and you're a sinner. So God doesn't hear sinners. So who doesn't God hear? Yeah, before we came to the knowledge of who we truly are, yes. Give me Acts 3. Let me show you. Actually, give me 1 Kings 8. We're going to start there. Yes, we did all that. We were all, give me Titus 3 and 3 first. Bring it up. All right? Because we ain't out here acting like we holier than thou. Like we weren't murderers, adulterers, gang bangers, drug dealers. Right? We're not acting like that. But once we received the knowledge of the truth, we changed our ways. All right? Hurry. Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. For we ourselves... So we ourselves, those who teach this Bible, read, that you see up here in the purple and gold, read, also were sometimes foolish. So we ourselves were sometimes foolish, meaning walking contrary to the, the uh, commandments of God. We thought we were African Americans, right? We, we thought that Islam was the way. We thought that, hey, I can go to the NFL. My whole life was, look, I'm going D1, I'm going to ball, I'm going to make it. Until the Lord said, you know what, I'm going to break your kneecap, Negro, because I got something for you. And then I heard the truth. Bring it out. So we ourselves were sometimes foolish, read, disobedient. We were disobedient, read, deceived. We were deceived by the media, by these imposter pastors. Right. Thinking that, oh, I'm a Gentile. Oh, God's laws are done away with. Oh, the church folks back in the day, they had the greatest zeal towards God. They knew what they were talking about. We were deceived. We, serving diverse lusts. We were going after our lusts. Again, adultery, murder, game banging, drug dealing. We were doing all that. We were doing all of it. Read. And pleasures. 
Living in malice. And living in malice. The other brother brought out earlier about the hatred. We had that hatred for our brothers, for our sisters. We didn't care how we treated the women of our people. Bring it out. We didn't care that we married other nations. That's malice. That's hatred. Towards who? Towards your sister. Towards God. That's right. That's right. Read. I see your face. We can get into that. Yes. Read. Bring it and out. Envy. And envy. We envy one another. So, for example, why do a lot of killings take place in the black community? Envy, jealousy, right? You got what I want, and I'm going to take it from you. Right? We used to roll in that spirit. We're not saying we did it. Read. Hateful. We were what? Hateful. We were hateful. And many of us battle that spirit today. Why? Because we got 30 years worth of hating another man who looked just like me. So now understanding that, hey, the black Messiah, he created me. And he created this brother too. I can't hate this brother. That's right. This is my brother made in the same image of our creator. That's uh, right. What do I look like hating this brother and he look just like me? That mean I hate myself. Teacher. That mean I hate my creator. That's, That's right. right. Read, and hating one another. There it is, hating one another. All right, so we're not saying that we didn't uh, dive in those spirits. We didn't have that mindset because we all did. We all transgressed. But give me 1 Kings 8. Let me show you what we did. Start at verse 46. Because we, as you see up here, we didn't always live this life, man. We didn't always live this life. We made a choice. When we found out how great our ancestry really is, when we found out that we're the sons of the living God, Bring it out. that brought purpose to our life. That's right. We can no longer live as African Americans. We can no longer live as Nubians, Islam. We can't do that. God spoke to the children of Israel and the children of Israel alone and said, keep my commandments and live. That's right. right. So when we heard this truth, this is what we did. Read. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. If they sin against thee, because we found out what? That the children of Israel, they sinned against God. Right? All this took place. He's going to read it. Read. For there is no man that sinneth not. So the children of Israel sinned against God because there's no man that sinneth not. It's a daily fight. That's why Paul say, I die daily. Teach, huh? Why? Because we got to fight our thoughts. We got to we gotta hold ourselves accountable to the standard which our God set for us as his sons, as his daughters. We have moral discipline now. Breathe. And they'll be angry with them. God got angry with us because we broke his laws. He's our father. So if you have children, right? You, no. All right. So for example, a father, he has children, okay? If his children disobey him, what does that father do? He punishes them. He disciplines them. Why? So they can know right from wrong. Bring it out. But that right there, you okay with God having that happen? Yes, I'm okay with it. Because once you realize how wicked we were and what we actually did, you would be okay with it. And it's going to explain it. Read. And deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captive. So God already told us, if you broke my commandments, you will serve your enemies in the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Right? We said, yes, Lord. We obey. We understand. Thank you for the covenant. And I'm going to show you the importance of those covenants a little later. But yes, I'm okay with that. Read. Unto the land of the enemy. So we were carried away to the land of the enemies. Read. Far or near. Far or near. We were brought far away from Jerusalem. We're on the other side of the earth. Far away from our homeland. The northeast panhandle of Africa. Read. Yet, if they shall be thinking. Themselves. Hold on, what did the men in purple and gold do when they found out that they're the Israelites and the sons of God? Bethink themselves. So we bethought ourselves. We remember who we are. Those signs that were put upon us, those curses for a sign and a wonder, it allow us to remember that we're the children of Israel, that the Bible speaks of. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So we accepted our true identity. We got tired of living like niggas. We got tired of living like nobodies and accepting everything that was told to us. Right. 
So we only needed one voice of reason, and it wasn't our own, but it was the Bible. That's oh. right. All right? So we bethought ourselves, read, in the land whither they were carried captives in America, in the Caribbean, South America, throughout the four corners of the earth, the, two, the 12 tribes of Israel were taken. So we remembered who we are, read, and repent. Hold on, what did we do? And repent. We repented. We stopped eating pork. That's right. We stopped marrying other nations. G shot. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 3. That's the second time you'd have fucked up. Touch that. Yeah, read about the different nations. Yeah, yeah. This whole book is about nations. It's about a chosen nation, and then it's about other nations in which God created that his chosen people would have in bondage. So let me get this straight. All black people are supposed to come together as a couple. Not supposed to go outside their race for nothing. They're supposed to be. Yes, the 12 tribes of Israel, because all black people aren't the same black people, all right? So these men and women that you see here, that's identified on this sign here, these are the 12 tribes of Israel. They shall not marry other nations. Well, well, well that's what I'm trying to get at it. When you say 12 nations, you can marry within the 12 yes, nations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So black and the Indians. Yes, sir. The blacks, the Indians, the Puerto Ricans. It's a lot to go. Hey. It's right. a, right, whatever your palate has a desire for is definitely amongst these people here. Right. All right. All right? So we're going to get the law. Just start at verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 3. three. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. So God says, neither. This is a commandment. Shall you make marriages with them, meaning the other nations. Read. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son. Thou shalt not. That's a law. You shall not give your daughter to their son. All right? Because, hold on, we're going to keep reading. Read. Nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Nor his daughter shall you take to your son. So if he has a young man that's successful, let's say the Caucasian white man, right? He has a boy that's successful, and you're like, yeah, I want my daughter to get ahead in life. I don't want her to go through these hardships. And you, in your simplicity, you say, you know what? Go ahead and marry this white man. God said, you shall not do that. You shall not do that. And I'm gonna, it's going to explain in Tobit 4 and 12 why. Read. For they will not will turn away thy son. So if you do marry other nations, they're going to turn away your son. Read. From following me, he will no longer follow the one true God. The importance of the man is so, so, so valuable to God. It's the men that's going to stand up for the women. It's the men that's going to go out and fight for his people. It's the men that's going to make change in a community. It starts with the man. The man is the building block of the home. That's why your oppressor said, yo, we got to get that nigga about the house. If we want to rule over this people, you got to get that strong black man out of the house because the woman will follow after a God. She will follow after a man. It don't matter who it is. If she don't know that she has to be in subjection to this black man, that's why the black woman, she'll put blonde hair in her hair. She'll, she'll join the women's suffrage movement and say, you know what? Yeah, I want to be just like y'all. Give me them pants. Knowing damn well her ancestors didn't wear pants. Right. Knowing damn well that the black family before the 1960s and the women's suffrage movement, which we still suffer from today, our families were stronger before the 60s than we are today. We have the highest rate of single parenting households out of all nations. Why? Ain't no father in the home. But that was a that was a plan by your oppressor. Right? So read. That they may serve other gods. That's what happened. We will serve other gods. Tobit 4 and 12. So what so for example, many of us used to like other women, other nations, but when we heard that we're Israelites, we don't do such things. Bring it out. Because again, earlier we read about the malice and the hatred that we have for one another, right? In Titus 3 and 3. Read this. This is an instruction. This is what a father does to his son. All right? Read. Tobit chapter 4 verse 12. Teach, I... Beware of all whoredom. Tobit is telling his son, Tobias, to beware of all whoredom. All right? Read. My son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy father. He said, take us a wife of your people, a seed of your father. Chiefly. Meaning it's very important that you marry your own people. That's right. If you want a strong black community, 
The only way it's gonna be strong is if you see a black man and a black woman together. That's right. If you see them raising their kids together. But once you start to interracially marry, then you like, hold on. Maybe there's greatness in the other people. This is not so. When you look back in the ancient times of kings, right? They always married their own. Read. And take not a strange woman to wife. It said take not a strange woman to wife. So we're not supposed to marry Becky. That's right. The black woman is the greatest creation outside the black man. Make That's, it right. That's a fact. Read. Which is not of thy father's tribe. Read. For we are the children of the prophets. Hold on, who are we? The children of the prophets. We are the children of the prophets. That's right. The greatest men that you read in this Bible, we are their descendants. That's right. We aren't just descended from Yvette. We aren't just descended from Sherwood, Bob, Dick and Harry. No, we are descendants of the greatest men that God has chosen. Bring it out. Read. Noah. Noah. Noah was the only man that God found just in the whole world. Read. Abraham. Abraham, the father of many nations, who was a friend unto God. That's the right. only one. Read. Isaac. Isaac. Do you know how great Isaac was? To be chosen the promised child? We are a descendant of him. That's Read. Right. And Jacob. And Jacob. The father of the 12 tribes of Israel, the patriarch. We are a descendant of these men. And what did these men do? Because if you want to honor your father and mother, you will follow in their footsteps, That's correct? That's right. Now let's see what our fathers did. Read. Remember, my son. He say, remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred. They did what? Married wives of their own kindred. So our fathers, out of all these nations, because we were the least of nations, so there was many more of the Chinese, the Japanese, the Caucasian, there were many more, but these men said, you know what? God doesn't like when I marry other nations. So they married women of their own people. That's right. That's what the children of the prophets do. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.